Hey y'all, Kalari here. I am taking a little bit of a risk doing this because like I said, streaming on hardcore for me means putting up with lag. But I was explaining to an amazing streamer named Herc yesterday and to another amazing streamer, uh, Gothic Princess, about my bard build. I know a lot of people are like, how do you survive on hardcore? And when I made Melodica, I had one thing in mind, getting quickly and efficiently to both 1750 favor and 20. And she was able to do that in four days because of the build that I did with her. And I decided to bring her out to the Orchard and Macabre epic version to show the damage she can do at level 22 now. And just show you some of the things I did to build her for survivability on hardcore. For me, I love bards. The bard rogue splash is what got me through hardcore season one after I tweaked it a few times because, you know, hardcore was rough season one and I died a few times in group. So I just wanted a build that I could solo a lot with and I went for basic Batgirl capabilities, being able to get traps, being able to heal and stuff. And I know a lot of people think, well, bards are good for songs and stuff, and then they can just hang back. And back in the day, yeah, you could build a bard and basically buff everybody and pike your way through. And shout out to all the people who have built those opportunist bards on Hardcore. I've seen you. You do your thing. Find yourself somebody who can get you those uh, favorite unlocks. More power to you. I can't play that way. It bothers me to pike. I've piked like maybe twice so far with my actual warlock because some of my friends are playing higher level stuff and they're like, hey, you want free favor? And I'm not going to say no to free favor because I'm trying to unlock the horse. But I try not to join groups that I can't contribute to. And one of my issues with the bard is while it's extremely versatile and you can buff yourself and your party and do a lot of things, my bards on Solono started collecting dust because I felt like I couldn't hang with people damage-wise, especially in Reapers and Epics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buff up my little hireling squad here because this is Epic Orchard. And if you're not careful, it'll murk your face. Now, I still have two extra lives. They put that mechanic in Hardcore Season 3 to, you know, help with all the lag stuff. But it's still no guarantee that you can't lose them. I had three. And then I did Heroic Elite Temple of All by myself. Because I know the quest well. And I lagged out in a trap. And, you know... That happens. Now, as you can see, the bar can heal. It's not going to be as powerful as like a cleric heal. And I know Albus is like, What are you doing? I'm here. I can do this. You know. But I just wanted to show that, yes, a bar can heal. They can heal via spells or like I keep uh, skill scrolls. And normally I keep more reconstruct scrolls, but unfortunately for me, it's hardcore. I don't have the kind of money that I normally have on a regular server. So I'm going to finish doing buffing, and then I'm going to buff myself. So you'll see what kind of buffs that I've used for a bit now. Because you get a lot of these buffs by like level 13. And I will break down some of the things that I did give Albert some songs. She's a spell singer too. So she regenerates songs. She helps with spell pen and all that stuff. And you're about to see that on me. Let me highlight Melodica. And I had a permanent blur item, but I decided to give that to Kalari. Because I get a long-term buff. So I extend my buffs because I don't want to have to keep buffing people. And I like to think of her as a shrine optional build, and you'll see why once the song comes up. You get this effect, and you see the little number twos over my head? That's my spell points regenerating. And then 
So since I'm epic, I get inspired excellence, which raises everybody's ability scores. So my hit points go up greatly. You get the arcane aid that gives spell penetration plus three for our spells level one through nine. Rockish refrain. I only put one point in that. I could have made it plus three, but you know. If you're getting all those things to you in epics, I really don't want to run with you anyway. Sorry. Not sorry. You have you get temporary spell points. I took the freedom of movement because not everybody remembers to cast freedom of movement on themselves. And this gives you 20 minutes of freedom of movement. Of course, the spell song vigor. The song of arcane might. It, it raises your caster level of spells. Oh, people are dying. This is so sad. You get Sustaining Song, which gives you a bit of a heal buff. And then the basics. Inspire Heroism, which raises your Armor Clash, your Sage, your Dodge. And Inspire Confidence, it gives you boost to your skills. And I want to thank Linda Bell wholeheartedly for her work on the Bard upgrades. Because, like I said, back in the day, Bards were the Pike and Buff class. And now, with a bit of splashing, and I'm going to break down her build once I'm in the safe area, but I just want to show you what she's capable of. Let me get some stone skin on. I also keep a DR buckler on her. Because DR is your friend, y'all. Especially on epics. Get yourself some DR items. Especially once you get to the live server and do events like the Halloween event. There's a really nice cloak that you can upgrade and get some really nice DR. Trust in it. But I wanted to show you what she can do. And unfortunately, I have more of an undead um, map. Not unfortunate because she can still do her thing, but you want to be careful because these things are like level 29, level 33, and I am only level 22. So what I like to do is send the fighters up ahead to start stuff, get a good distraction, and we're going to start with Fiendish Arpeggio, which Ash Prison stuff. And then we're going to, oh, well, we're going to hit stuff with a Dragon Breath. And I do believe that, yep, Undead can be hit with this arpeggio. You also get your Sonic spells, which I wonder if any of that registered the combat log on here. It's so... Ugh. I wanted to see if it registered what my... Uh, Fiendish Arpeggio does. Also, I don't have any music going. I'm not going to use copyrighted music. I have the perfect album for this character. But it's not showing what the Arpeggio does just yet. So hopefully we'll find some uh, more stuff to pester. Okay, yeah, there we go. Oh, Lord, that's a lot. There's a library guard. We're going to dragon breath these things. And let's see what that did. Okay. Yeah, there's the dragon breath. Now, when you get epic levels, you get epic destinies. And like I said, I will break down the epic destiny stuff as best as I can when I'm in a safer place. I don't want to keep stopping to do build stuff in the epic orchard because it'll murder my face. But as you can see, and this isn't like the best damage I did because I actually hit over 10,000 points. But you can do a lot of damage with this fire breath stuff and it, let's say like Kalari's cold spec for warlock I am definitely going to do a uh, fire spec um, 
a, a cold spec dragon with uh, the draconic presence, which is basically the Sork capstone uh, epic destiny. I, I get all that stuff mixed up. But yeah, I want to show what uh, a clear cut of what Fiendish Arpeggio does because it's just such a uh, game changer. And you basically play your violin, and as you can see, it imprisons stuff. And it is so amazing. And then you do all that damage with your stuff. And it works on both humans. And see, you got I, I got a 10k cred. I don't know if you can see those numbers. But let me scroll this... Uh, Damage. And normally I don't get super excited about crits. I'm not like a super min max type builder. I, I play DDL for fun. Even after all these years, the only thing that's kept me going is you can play for fun. But I know a lot of people are like, you know, should I build a bard on a server like the hardcore server? And yes, this is a game changer. And it's a game changer because you can actually contribute damage to the party, especially on epic versions of quests. Like, let's say the plan of yours is to avoid Reaper stuff until you're higher level. This is a good build for that, you know, because you have crowd control capabilities, which I'll try to show um, if I find another group of stuff. But yeah. 10k damage is a game changer on hardcore for first life without all the gear that I have on the live server. I cannot wait to transfer her to the live server now because of it. Now, we have this song, and I don't know if I, yep, I put enlarge on it, so it might work. And you can hold stuff. And burn it down. I also use dots because I have the splash of warlock. And like I said, this is just some of the things your bard can do while uh, playing this game. Now I'm gonna recall because I don't want to give too much art XP out here. I'm already level 22. I'm hopefully gonna find a group of friends to play the epic versions of quest with so that I can not only just start making that Reaper XP in favor, but I played this build by myself because I really wanted to unlock the first two tier cosmetics and then just be able to chill out and play Kalari and if she died, fine, I could re-roll her, I, at least I got something done on hardcore goal-wise. But honestly, I'm kind of sad I didn't group her now because I didn't understand how well she could work in a group. I just wanted a survivable build. So let's go someplace. Not that this area is not super quiet. There's not a lot of people on right now, surprisingly. But I just wanted to go someplace chill to really... Uh, break down the building and stuff. Hmm. Well, you know what? I can stay here. It's fine. So, what we're gonna do is explain Melodica from top to bottom. And this is her epic uh, build. And what she's wearing currently. She still has the Ravenloft goggles because it provides Anthem. What Anthem does is you can read it it provides uh, your songs back over time. You also get that ability with the, um, the enhancement. So I really don't need it anymore. But I still use them. But it, it also makes it easier to switch between that and my disable goggles. Which, I, those are my search. And then I picked up these nifty little disable goggles at level 21 in the King's Forest. You know, I wear her intelligence 
stuff and spells focus mastery because it raises the DC of my spell. I have an insightful wizardry, charisma, and tumble locket. That's very helpful because your bard is charisma based. The better your charisma, the better your spells will land. Um, oh, it's starting to get active here. I have a nice will save and dodge cloak, which replaced my Ravenloft cloak for those things. I have a spell resistance and a strength eight. And all this stuff I found on this server. I have the Charisma 9 and Resonance Booster. Spell Lore, and this is stuff I found throughout Hardcore. Anytime there was a Spell Lore, Spell Pen item, even at low levels, I grabbed it. Anytime there was a, a Charisma item, I grabbed it. Sheltering is very important on Hardcore. You want that MRR and PRR reducers. And I had boots from even low levels to guide me through that. I have my Featherfall and Sonic War because, like, you get Sonic spells. I have these bracers, which I love. You get the spell resistance, spell save, and your con. And then I'm still rocking the Robo Fire right now because you can put. Uh, heavy Fort Sapphire on it, and by level 10, your Heavy Fort is done and you don't have to farm the Orchard. What you do is you go out to the desert and you keep running the mummy chest all the way in the back of the desert, not the spell storing one, the other lesser known mummy. And that's where that rope drops. And by level 10, if you're doing your fiend build, you have a vocation, improved fire resistance, and a boost to your combustion. What I also did was Borderlands has these turn-ins with the arcane ingots, and I got Scepters of Combustion, and you get a level 2 version in the heroic Borderlands, and then you can go into the epic Borderlands and get the arcane ingot, and it's only one ingot for the staff. And then I did Ravenloft really quick to get the gem of the hopeful and I don't have much in it because I, I didn't plan to play this build at first I just was going to get her to 20 and 1750 favor and shelf her and then play Kalari and group up with friends and stuff but she's so much fun to play she's a game changer as you've seen from what I was doing in Epic Orchard she can do damage and it's because of the way she was built and I will open up the character sheet and this is with songs her charisma is a 42 because I have inspired heroics all my ability scores go up by two then you have ship buffs so I'm not going to lie to you guys and act like you can just make this build and get all this stuff without work that's bullcrap I'm not gonna sway you like that as you see, her best save is her reflex save, which I really wanted because of I put the rogue slash in there for evasion. And her breakdown is 16 bard, uh, 2 epic, but you don't have to pay attention to that, 2 rogue, and 2 warlock. And I went to 2 rogue almost automatically, and unfortunately, because it's an iconic build and it's built towards bard, you can't start as rogue. And I know every builder is like, no, you have to start as a rogue to get the max skill points, whatever, shut up. I'm trying for survivability. I wanted evasion. Two rogue get you evasion. And you can work around not starting out with all those points if you're smart. Then I splashed Warlock, and I showed you in another uh, playthrough yesterday with Kalari Y, but I'm going to pull up the enhancements again, because like I said on that video, I'm spread a bit more thin with Melodica, because of all I wanted to do, but I love the Warlock. I took off the Rogue stuff, because I really don't do a lot of traps, I still can, and I'll show you on the character sheet where I'm at with trap skills, but I went Taints and Scholar, because I do Eldritch Blast. They don't do a super lot of damage, but they'll help me out in a pinch. 
I also went fiend health for extra hit points. So when I buff, you get extra hit points, and my buffs are extended. So you'll get this little icon, and I think I can cast a six minute uh, fiend health on people now. Let me test it with an extended haste. Yeah, so you get six minutes of extra health points, and let me move the enhancement tree temporarily. So that's 66 health points, because it's based on your charisma that you get. Then you toss like a GH on top of that, and it goes to 85 extra spell points. Then you play your songs, and I think that continuously gives me plus 20 no matter what. And it boosts my spell point pool. But getting back to the enhancements, and there's going to be people... The Orchard is such good XP, especially at epic levels. So you're going to see people running in and out of this video. That's, it's no problem. The first thing I maxed out on this... Uh, well, not maxed out, but the first thing I invested points in was the Tiefling Scoundrels... Uh, race enhancements. Why? Because you get Hellish Review, which I knew it. I don't even think I put on and I was getting those spell crits. And what that does is it gives you a, a chance to damage stuff. You're enshrouded in flame and uh, if something hits you, it damages them. Which can be a godsend on Hardcore Server. Then I just put points and everything I could to get this. Ash Imprisonment and Hellish Reverberations. And why? Because no matter what, as a tiefling uh, scoundrel, you get Fiendish Arpeggio. It's only six points, and it enhances your fiddle. It does 1d6 fire damage, plus one fire damage per to cast the levels. And when you combine it, with Ash Imprisonment, as you've seen when I was running around the orchard in the video, that I can encase a creature in a flesh to stone that not only does fire damage, but it does sonic damage. I thought it just did the fire damage, but it also does sonic damage to them. It also can uh, hit anything that you can fascinate. So anything orange name and less can be hit by this undead can be hit by us in case, and even on bosses, though they don't get in case, they take a minus 4 to their armor class and minus 25% to their fortification. So if your tanks are beaten up on a boss, you've got extra. And then with this splash, I always take consume because it does chaotic damage and it's a dot that ticks. And I do stricken. Because that's a dot that reduces healing damage to your enemies, gives them negative fortitude, damages their um, their stuff, because I also put Taint the Blood. So I'm reducing their fortitude saves and saving throws with those. And this is just stuff I learned playing both Bards and Warlocks. Now, um, skill trees wise... I made sure to, you know, have a decent con concentration. It's not the best. This is a first life build. And like I said, I built her to rush to get my uh, cosmetic and 20 unlocks. But she's got a decent disable. And I'm not even wearing my disable gear. Let's see. With the plus 17, that goes to a 66, which is decent for hardcore. Like I said, I'm not rocking the past lives. I'm not rocking a ton of, you know, uber gear. A lot of this stuff I found along the way, and I put it right back in the bank just in case something happened to her. Perform is my best skill. Do not sleep on maxing out your perform skill. Even splashing with um, different classes, I made sure at every level to max out perform. Because it really does affect how your spells hit towards the end. I wanted a decent spellcraft, a decent search. My spot is complete garbage. My swim is complete garbage. Definitely wanted UMD because, once again, you see, for scrolls, 
there's no fail for a 16 bar. But for things like Reconstruct, 200% chance to activate. I run with all different kinds of players, and I want to be able to effectively heal Warforge in my party. I also run with Mass Spell Resistance. I learned this playing the Cleric. This can be valuable in certain quests, especially at lower levels. Like, I drew this on and ran through your Cypher, and I kept getting that blue block orb that you show. They couldn't get past the Spell Resistance. So if you're a low B playing this, by mid-level 11, if you're running hardcore like most of us, where you're a few levels above the, you can't go past 4, but if you're a few levels above and run a Zorian Cypher on like your level 12, 13, or 14, grab a couple of mass spell resistance scrolls, throw it on yourself and your party, you'll thank me for it. Trust me on that. And then you have things like Break Enchantment, which helps when an uh, enemy throws a firewall or cloud, uh, some kind of crowd control like cloud kill and stuff. So, uh, Break Enchantment, and if your DCs are high enough because of your form, you will be able to dispel that. I also took a lot of the Draconic line, and I'm not finished with it yet, as you can see. But my plans is to um, really utilize this Epic Destiny. I'm not going to do a whole big ETR thing. But I will be rocking the Draconic Incarnation. Because as you see, the damage speaks for itself on that. And I just went along the line. I got an extra energy sheet. Even though by splashing Warlock, I have resist energies. And it's a 10 minute buff, but, well, ooh, 17 minutes now. I guess because Epic, it adds to the caster level. And I have built in resist energies, and I've had that since like level 7 or level 8. I can't remember exactly when I started to splash Warlock. But, you know, the Red Dragon Breath, you can't beat this. And I have to go out with the bang just in case I get a lot of damage, but. My whole playstyle of hardcore is to try not to take a lot of damage. Because I, I don't want to die. <laughs> I think that's the whole point of hardcore. And then you have energy burst, which I didn't test that. I'll probably do that later. I'm, I'm taking a lot of risk, you know, streaming on hardcore as it is. Because latency-wise, it's not a very wise thing to do. As you can see, her eyes are glowing because I got uh, Hellish Rebuke rocking. And it just means, you know, if you hit me, I'm shrouded in fire. I will burn you. But, like I said, I really hope this video helps people who want to play on hardcore, want to have a build that's a bit survivable if you play right. Even though you can do massive amount of spell damage if you play it right, you still want to play carefully with any build on hardcore. But I really feel like this Fiend Bard is a game changer. It really was fun playing this. Um, it really was fun playing this build on Hardcore. I'm hoping to be able to play in Epic Groups with this build. And I think I can. I think she'll be able to hold her own. Um, Favor-wise. And yeah, I did a lot of Epic Normal stuff to get gear. No shame in my game. She, and so far, is only at 1,840 favor. Because, like I said, I was originally just playing her to quickly get to 1,750 and 20, which she did, all by myself, which kind of sad. I've jumped in maybe four groups since level 20, a couple of the Marketplace Barracks and um, Farming Evening Star for um, kills out there. But... If you need a build that you can solo, I really feel like this Fiend Bard is it. Especially if you know how to take your time, utilize spells like Invisibility, and stealth your way through certain things. She's a light armor wearer, so um, robes and stuff. And I put points in high and then move silently. Not a super lot, because... Like I said, she's a bit spread thin because of the splashing. 
but I really just wanted a bill that could get through quests I knew I could get decent favor for by myself. And like I said, the bard is just so versatile. But the Fiend build is a true game changer. I honestly did not realize how much fun you could have with a caster bard in Solas. Because even my spell singer on Solona, I splashed two weapon... Well, not splash. I built her to do two weapon fighting with her rogue levels. Because I thought, I can't contribute any other way, you know... Her sonic spells do all right, but I really didn't have the desire to gear her towards sonic spells. But I do love combustion, and I love the whole fire um, spec thing. So it is fun for me to play a build like this, because I know stuff about elemental damage and I know stuff about bard songs and I know about spell pen and raising that oomph and this is just for those who are interested in a hardcore build but aren't sure what to do and you like bards and you like casters but you really want something that's survivable and for me honestly Especially if you're just looking to get that 1750 favor and to get to level 20 as safely as possible. You cannot go wrong with a Bard Tiefling thing, but it's not a free build also. And I wanted to add that, and I'm sorry if I didn't add that. You can't just unlock this if you're free to play. It costs, I believe, 795 Turbine Points. So it is an investment. But for hardcore, if you have the points already, let's say you are banking points for something, it's a pretty decent build. It's a pretty decent um, race to unlock. I do not regret it. I unfortunately am VIP, so I had the points to unlock the Tiefling Scoundrel. No regrets. Can you do this bar build with just the Tiefling? I believe you can do. A, a bar rogue warlock, yes, but I don't think you'll get the fiendish or uh, pagio. I think that is just with the tiefling scoundrel build, unfortunately. So, like I said, you might not even be able to unlock this, which the build still works with a uh, bard. You may not want to splash so much if you don't feel comfortable but the warlock splash in itself will get you through Lavenloft because you get the let me show you again because I didn't have it unlocked on Kalari yet because she's only level 5 but in the enlightened where is it where is the enlightened uh, warlock thing I guess I gotta scroll to it. Mm -mm. Oh, here it is. Enlightened Spirit. Not only do you get resist energies, but you get a permanent shield effect. So, no more having to remember to hit your shield clicky. No more having to night shield scroll, which level two, level one, I went and bought these just to have them. Because they're invaluable. So many things class master magic missile. But the reason I splashed Warlock was for an 8 point investment, you get the permanent shield clicky, you get a bit of MRR, you get some PRR, and then you get resist energies, which really helps when you're not only soloing, but you can buff other party members with it. And then, like I said, I took a bit of Tainted Scholar so that I could have some Eldritch Blast pack damage. And the hit point buffs. And then I always go into the Soul Eater because, like I said, these are two of my favorite dot spells in the game. Because they attack and you can use them on bosses to make them more vulnerable. And I always have some form of DR. And that is from this little nifty buckler that I ended up getting off the auction house. 
I love it. Adamantine bucklers do not give you spell resistance value on the bar. I had a low B one that I put on the little bar because I'm playing around on hardcore with as well. It was level one and it was an adamantine buckler and I was like, this is a good sign. So, like I said, I am not like a super min-max builder. I don't know if you saw it, but you get a, a little violin fiddle as well. And you get, like, cosmetic gear, scoundrel leathers, which is really super sexy and stuff. And I'm rocking my epic voice of the master that I got in Delaris. I didn't run the epic version of that yet. I ran the heroic version and just picked the epic thing just in case I ran level 20. But, for real, I wanted to show people why I told her that this is a game changer. And it really is. It is so much fun. And then at level 15, because it's an iconic build, and on Hardcore you start at level 1, but you still get your level 15 gear, you get like a Vorpal um, uh, Light Crossbow. I believe you get a Rapier and some other neat stuff. You get Blindness Immunity Goggles, which I used when I was running Chain of Flames for that weird uh, optional where you take the guy's blindness. And then you get religious lore. So in quests like Lords of Dust, you can purify the altars, uh, which gets you an extra chest. In the uh, high road quest, you can uh, do the staffs and not have the person die like unfortunately happened on my friend's uh, stream the other night. And it's just a very versatile build. So I wanted to just not show off, per se. Because like I said, I am not a super building person. I play BDO for fun. I'm literally doing a, character, a class completionist just for the whim of it. Because I've been playing BDO for 13 years. I don't care about any game anymore. I just want to relax, have fun. But on Hardcore, it's about survivability, and I just wanted to show the build that I used to have that survivability. And like I said, you can go back, replay, and see for yourself the damage that you can do just on Epics. And that's if you want to play your bard this way. Not everybody wants to play a bard defensively. Like I said, shout out to those opportunist bards, especially those who splash rogue who just want to hang back, go off the party, get traps, and stay out of the way, and let everybody else do the damage. I don't play like that. I like being able to offensively cast. And I've seen people do, like, amazing bar builds that really rock the sonic damage. But to be able to do both, have both the fire oomph and the sonic oomph, is just, it is amazing. It is so much fun playing this build. I can't even tell you how much fun I've had just running around here and Evening Star. And, you know, I would have been scared on my original Bard Rogue build to be running around the Epic Orchard by myself, even with Hirelings. But with this build, I feel a little bit more confident being able to go into Epic stuff than I did first season. And like I said, it's not a free class, but it is so worth it because once you buy it, it's unlocked on every server, including hardcore. And like I said, for the point investment, you can't beat the survivability. And um, the Warlock pack I went in with her is the Fiend pack because it just makes sense. It does fire damage. It's boosted by your charisma and your evocation. So it made sense. What I'm doing with my actual Cold Warlock, and I'm going to do the Cold Breath Dragon once I get Kalari to 20 here on Hardcore, is to the Kasseri Storm. But like I said, this was just a quick let's play to just show the damage she does. And this was consistent. Even at low levels, her uh, fiendish arpeggio was just mowing down stuff. And I was able to solo quest with her, you know, because of this. It's just such an amazing thing. And you get it at level one. 
So, like I said, that's just all I wanted to say about hardcore. And definitely, once again, thank you, Linda Bell. Thank you, all the developers who worked on this bard uh, iconic because it is just so much fun to play. And I don't normally tell people how to spend their turbine points. You know, I love pumping up this game because it's, I've been playing it for so long. But if I ever give a recommendation, it is because I seriously love it. And I'm telling you, for your money, you cannot go wrong investing in the Tiefling Scoundrel for hardcore and beyond. It is just that much fun. It is just that much survivable and I think that if you play it and oh I forgot about meta magic the meta magics that I uh took on her because they make sense before I wrap this up and go on defeat takes a bit to load looks like it's not responding Ugh. one of the things about playing in window mode for me, I get a lot of it's not responding messages. But I play on my TV because I'm an old lady and it helps me see. So I just do window mode so that I can keep track of stuff. So those are my barge feats. And you get things like Song of Freedom. But if you have Break Enchantment, you really don't use Song of Freedom a lot. It does help to uh, have backup Break Enchantment though song-wise. But... I like to use my songs for healing and immobilizing stuff with like Fascinate and uh, Mass Hold. But Meta Magics, these are what I took. I took Enlarge, and somebody's like, why would you waste uh, uh, Meta Magic feed on Enlarge? Because, as you've seen in the video in the orchard, from a distance, I can target something, hit that Mass Hold, and it's held. And I'm back away before it all can rush at me. Enlarge spell. Don't sleep on it. It's very good. Extend for buffs. Because I don't want to keep buffing people. Because of extend, all my buffs are at least like 30, 40 minutes. It's ridiculous. But because I have spell song vigor rocking, my points go up anyway. Heighten is a must. Because it raises the oomph of like um, my hold spells and my crowd control spells. I never go without heighten. And then because of Phoenix Arpeggio, I went maximize because as you can see, you can put it on that and you can put it on Dragon Breath and you get those nice little 10,000 crits. Now, some people would be like, well, can I substitute one of those for Empowered? Go ahead, more power to you. For me, because I wanted survivability, enlarge made sense because I can crowd control from a distance. And you start out with, like, hypnotize. Where did I put him? No, oh, it's down here. At level one as well. And hypnotize is so invaluable at low levels because what will stop those kobold shaman from throwing lightning bolts at you if you don't have invasion? Your friendly bard who has hypnotism. It's like I said, this build is just so much fun, and I know a few people wanted to know how I was able to unlock my little sash and crown on hardcore and get past level 20 on hardcore with only one death due to lag. Freaking lag. Still upset about it because it looked like I cleared the trap and then all of a sudden I was dead. But Kesara, I still have two lives. I'm not going to bitch about it. Out of my system. This was supposed to highlight the finish part. And I really hope I did a good job, you guys, showing why the build works. I wish I could show a bit more fight and the damage, but I really don't want to take too many risks by myself. I'm hoping that I get into more groups. I'm going to try to run with, like, people who I know are running epics fairly well soon. There's a lot of really amazing streamers that are doing that within the next few days. So maybe you'll see my bard on there doing her thing with them. But other than that, I hope this walkthrough helps you understand why I splashed the way I did, why I made this black, black, <laughs> Batgirl build to survive on hardcore. 
And maybe it'll show you that a little bit of point investment of your Neo points towards some of these Iconics is worth your time. I know a lot of people love the um, Dragonborn. I'm not sure if you have to buy those. I think I got those. It's, it's been so long. I, I, I don't know what I have to time. But this is the last thing that I spent so many Turbine points on. And believe me, I wouldn't lie to you guys. It's worth it. It is definitely worth it. Uh, playing. So I'm going to wrap it up. I've got other things to do. I snuck on and did this. I really am supposed to be getting some editing work done, but shh, they won't know. Nobody watches my stream really anyway. I'm just kidding. Shout out to those of you who do watch and support my stream. And when I say support, I mean just watch them. I'm not affiliated. I'm not trying to get people to subscribe to me. I just play for fun. I'm a writer. That is where I make my bread and butter. And I'm also a, a social activist. So that is what I do for a living now. I do not stream for money. And there are plenty of amazing affiliated streamers for DDL that you can go support. Like Samias, Voodoo Spice, Herc, I believe, uh, Nubacabra. Amazingly fun to watch streamers. Every once in a while you'll see me. Uh, run by, I gave newbie uh, um, run by bar buff yesterday just to play around. We're a fun community at DDO, and Hardcore has brought a lot of us together. So if you want streams to support, you have the extra funds, and you want to subscribe, once again, Nubacabra, Samias, Voodoo, plenty of amazing DDO. Herc, he stays in character. I love stuff like that. I sat for like hours on his stream just listening to him because he is just amazingly funny and talented and we're just a really nice community we're all ages even old ladies like me play DDL still and I just want new players to know that there are ways to survive on hardcore and even though I'm getting a bunch of death notices popping up on the screen Please ignore those. There are people at level 6 dying to whatevers. But yeah, I'm going to wrap it up before I start truly meandering. Thank you for watching this stream. And I hope I really got you uh, interested in the Fiend Bard Bell. And I'll be streaming.